Good morning. Welcome to worship at Willow Glen United Methodist Church in San Jose, California. I am Susan Smith, the pastor to children and families here, and I'm glad that you've found us. Today is Laity Sunday, and we are celebrating the ministry of all Christians in leading and developing the church for ministry in our community. As the body of Christ, each of us plays a role in sharing the gospel message. And I hope that as you worship today, you will reflect on how you are living out your faith in the world and using your gifts to support the ongoing ministries of this congregation. To this theme, our lay leader, Tom Grubb, will share his message with us today. Thank you, Tom, for your leadership and inspiration. And thank you to all who share their gifts to create this service of praise. Willow Glen United Methodist Church would like you to find your place in this family of faith. Please visit our website or send us an email to let us know that you are here and how we can support you on your journey. As we begin to reopen and gather together in safe ways during the coming months, we hope that you will be part of our next chapter together. May this be a place of welcome and strength for you. Please join me responsively in the call to worship. We are all called to go and share Christ's love with the world. We gather to grow deeper in faith. We learn to recognize grace everywhere in every life. We wait for God's saving love. We remember our purpose through the means of grace. God's love is remaking the world. Let us worship together. Amen. friends. This morning we're celebrating Laity Sunday and laity is a big word. 
maybe not so big, it's only five letters, but it's big in that it encompasses all of us who are members of the, of the family of God. All of us who come to church and want to learn how to be even more of the people that God created us to be. So each of us has our unique ways of doing that and our unique ways of being involved in the family. And this is the Sunday when we celebrate all of that uniqueness and those wonderful gifts and how we work together to be the body of Christ. We're celebrating the ministry of all Christians in this congregation, but in churches around the world and focusing on how God has created each of us for a unique purpose. Now, it's been a really long time since we've seen each other in person, a lot of us. And each time I come across one of you or visit your house from afar, I am struck by how much you have grown. So for today's service, I wanted to share with the congregation just how much you are growing. Think about it. Your body is growing, but also your heart and your mind are growing and you are growing as a person of God. God created each of us to be specially unique and wonderfully suited for a certain task in this life, maybe more than one, and each of us is discovering what that task is and what those special gifts are that God has given us. So, seeing you grow in this family of faith brings joy and excitement to each person who loves you here. And since we don't get to see each other in person as much anymore and run around coffee hour and share cookies together, I thought maybe we could at least have a slideshow, share some pictures of how we are each growing and know that with our physical growth is also coming a lot of spiritual growth as well. We are definitely growing into the people God created us to be. So here are our friends. Normally, we would sit in the circle together and share our our lives together week after week. While we can't do that, we still love one another from afar and support one another on our journey of faith and know that with each step, with each little bit of growth, your church family is celebrating you and all that you bring to this world to love the life that God has given us to create justice in the world that he created and to continue to grow and to give and to offer those gifts in service of our creator.
Let us pray together. Clasp your hands and imagine the friends that normally sit in this circle with you. Most loving God, you have created us each in a, your image, and we give thanks for all of the ways that you are helping us to grow and to become even more the people that you want us to be. While we cannot be together, we celebrate each little bit of growth in each person, knowing that you are working in amazing ways in all of us, young and old, to help us more fully realize all that you have for us to do in the world as part of your, your church family and the family that we love so much. We pray for your continued wisdom and guidance as we grow, that we may continue to follow the way of your son, Jesus. We pray in his name, amen. Please join me in prayer. O oh, loving God, we live with hope, with an intentional faith, by studying the scriptures, constantly praying, and joining holy conversations that reflect your grace and your gospel. Wherever we encounter those made in your image, we bring the covenant hope that is written on our hearts. As we grow deeper in faith and live well for others, we pray for your church and the world you so love. We pray for a new passion to search scripture for the words of life that mend our connection and our world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with all who are called to follow you and lead others to faithful life in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose shattered wholeness cries out for saving presence and help. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with your persistent friends who are called to serve and witness through deeds and words that heal and free. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, O God, and help us reflect your life, hope, and salvation, amplifying your call for love and justice in a distracted and all too indifferent world. May the prayer of your Son guide us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. But lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's reading is from 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our scripture is from 1 Peter, verses 9 and 10. Peter wrote this letter to a group of Christians scattered throughout the northern areas of Asia Minor. He addressed the letter's recipients as aliens, which tells us that he was speaking not just to Jews or just to Gentiles, but to Christians who were living their lives in such a way that would have been considered alien to the surrounding culture. So Peter writes in this letter, but you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. Last week, one of my favorite musical artists, Jeff Tweedy from the band Wilco, released a new YouTube acoustic cover of John Lennon's song, God, a song from Lennon's first solo album after the Beatles broke up. Now, I never heard this song until I heard Tweedy's version of it. The opening phrase, God is a concept by which we measure our pain, is a hard one to ignore. From God is a concept, the song transitions onto a list of 15 one-line declarations of what he does not believe in. Magic, Bible, Hitler, Buddha, Jesus, Kennedy, and then after a pause, he winds it up with, I don't believe in Beatles. It was a turning point in his life where the past was the past and it was on to a new uncertain future. And so in this song, what does John Lennon say he believes in? At the end, leading into the final verse, he says, I just believe in me. What Lennon is saying is that meaning lies within oneself. Later in an interview about this song, he said, if there is a God, we are all it. So welcome to Lady Sunday 2020. This year, Lady Sunday is themed, therefore go with hope through engagement. Lady Sunday is a special Sunday defined by General Conference to quote, celebrate the ministry of all Christians. Lady Sunday is one way that we express the deep conviction that all, all are called to participate in God's mission and live this calling through the ministry of the church. It's learning to hear and answer God's call on each of our own lives as they intersect with the lives of all people. It's the all called to be all love until all love God and neighbor. John Lennon put forth the idea that God is a concept in this song. But that idea is shattered when we speak and when more importantly, we act in his name on his behalf. That means you have to shut out the demands of the world now and then to ask and listen, what do you want me to do, God? I know that I don't ask that question as often as I should. Somewhere in my life, somewhere along the way, I developed a sense of standing in the other person's shoes. Now I'm pretty sure that I developed that sense from experiencing pain, the kind of emotional pain inflicted by others that makes you question everything in your life. People certainly can be cruel to one another, but they can also be kind, we can be kind. Anyone can be an instrument of hope for someone else. Peter is telling us God calls on us to be just that, his royal change agents to bring good into this world. I learned that waiting around for someone to ask me for help is not the same as recognizing that I can help someone without being asked. Anyone who knows me knows that 
I'm one of those who is likely to answer the call from the church, whatever that call might be, whether it's making coffee, uh, serving on the SBRC, sharing my thoughts on a Lady Sunday, I'm always one to say yes. So being asked is good. I like being asked, but it's important that we, we must also engage the world to make it better of our own volition without being asked. I try to imagine what it must be like for Joyce Osborne these days. And I want to go see her and I want her to know that she is not forgotten. I want her to look into my eyes and know that. And I, I want her to know that she's loved. In that part of life, being so alone, who of us would not want that? Listen closely to, to 1 Peter again. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you, from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. From nothing to something, from rejected to accept it. Who do you know that might be feeling like nothing right now? And what would it take to make them feel like something? What does it feel like to be rejected because of the color of your skin or your age or even your God? Who will take on God's charge to us to accept the rejected, to embrace them, to support them, to include them? We must answer that call. It is our calling, and by the way, it's a very Methodist thing to do. I spend way too much time in my days trying to be useful in ways that are, are really useless in God's mission. So it is. That's the same tension that many of us experience. Those demands that are placed on us that can easily take us sideways and prevent us from being truly alive. Did you know that we Methodists entered into kingdom tide a few weeks ago? Back in the 30s, the period between the end of August and the end of the year was designated as kingdom tide. This was a time when the liturgy focused on doing good for those in need. And kingdom tide kind of faded out in the 90s. It had fulfilled its purpose of bringing Methodists together to be in the world doing good things. But the mission didn't end. Now more than ever, we need to be God here on earth. I mean, you don't have to look far. Division, scarcity, accelerated planetary scale change, pandemic, pick it, it's, it's all around us. John Lennon wrote in his song, God, in 1970, he wrote, and that was when the 60s were ending, right? It was the end of an era. Lennon's post Beatles life was just beginning. He was leaving one era and entering another. And I wonder, what is this new era that we are entering now and what's it gonna look like? The answer depends on you and me. What will you do to be God here in the here and now? Therefore go with hope through engagement. Don't overthink it. Go do something good for someone in need. And I'll end with this simple prayer by John Wesley. God grant that I may never live to be useless. Amen.
our faith can be summed up into the law of love for God and one another. We don't just talk about love here at Willow Glen United Methodist Church. We bring it to life in ministry. We offer hospitality. We build community. We act in compassion. We do justice work. In all these things, we worship and love God, and we offer our love to neighbor near and far. That is what this ministry and our gifts are about, and all of it hangs on love. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. You can visit www.wgumc.org give to find out the many ways you can give, or you can send a check to the church office. Please give as you are willing and able. God of grace and mercy, this day we offer ourselves, our tithes, and our offerings to you. Our giving is only the beginning of how we might honor you in gratitude, for you desire even more that our lives lived in you might be all love towards you and all your children on earth. We give joyfully, knowing instead 
that grace and love are ours to be claimed. Such a gift to be freed from judgment is far beyond our giving. May our gratitude be shown, not just in what we give, but also in how we share our lives in love and compassion. In thankfulness we pray, amen. As we prepare to close our worship service today, I invite you to receive this benediction. You are the people of God. Go forth to live in such ways that by your actions and words, others will see in you the life of Jesus and want to follow in his way. Amen. Go in peace.